We're standing here now in the Glebe Land, which is the subject of this project. At last year's conference, I pledged that I would work towards changing this area, which was very overgrown and not used uh, very much, into an area that would be useful for the whole community. In this space, we intend to do a variety of things. This area, which will be used as a teaching area for the children in Llandilla School about the river life. We also hope to have an area where we will have community gardens, um, a patch which will be a wildlife area and biodiversity area, a large open meadow area for holding events, and plant trees and so forth. We uh, applied for a grant uh, from Tesco's, uh, the, the Bags for Help scheme, and we're very fortunate that they gave us a grant of £8,000 and they said that, that could be increased uh, by putting it to a public vote in uh, branches of Tesco's stores. And uh, we're very fortunate that we got another 4,000 on top of that. We got a grant from Alex Danville of £2,100. And because the Community Council has been involved, we got a grant of £250 from them. And they've been very enthusiastic about the whole project. So we, we've got around £14,000. This project will uh, give us a great chance of working alongside the community. And this we regard as phase one of this project because I think there will be further phases we raise more money to do other things. Um, one idea, for example, is we might work with the school, the veterans and others in the community to develop a peace garden for 2018 to celebrate 100 years of the end of the First World War. But there are lots of other things we can do and we might have events here. We might develop other projects but this is for us to work with the community to see what they want, as much as just, just to think, well, what's next? After the diocesan conference last year, having filled in an I Can Do card, on which I put, I would like to get a toilet into my church, and I would like to um, get the inside a bit more user-friendly, I came away thinking, well, I've put that, something to think about for the future, and then about three weeks after the conference, I had a message from Jan Williams at the diocesan office and uh, she offered to, to help with anything. And I thought the fact that they'd looked at the cards and were offering help meant that I needed to do something. So I took her up on her offer. Uh, we recently had a grant from the Transition Fund and we're now able to get a composting toilet outside and uh, a wheelchair ramp inside. What I encouraged my congregation to do was to look at ways they could be involved and consider what they could do. And I just wanted some way of saying to the congregations, what can you do? And so I made them some little key rings. And I saw the diocesan logo, uh, unlocking our potential, and saw the key as symbolic of unlocking our potential. And I gave them a key with a little fob on it with I can do that. And I asked them to consider what they could do, however small, however big, and just really encourage them to get on board with whatever they could do and they did. The result the keys had was nothing particularly specific but there seemed to be a new energy, a new wanting to do things and the first thing that happened was we'd been talking about or, or people had been talking about putting a crown of lights on the tower of this church. Uh, people bought lights in memory of people or in celebration of things like new babies and we probably had about three or four hundred people sponsor a light bulb which we thought was a fantastic result and for the whole of Advent you could see the crown lit up across the valleys from miles around and I think it had a really profound effect on people and people have already been asking are you doing it again this year can we buy a light bulb this year and so it was really really good for the whole community. Since Advent I think there's a new confidence, a new energy, a new wanting to do things and instead of leaving it all to the vicar or seeing what ideas I come up with they seem to be coming up with can we have a go at this or how do you feel if we tried this and so this seems to be an ongoing energy right into next year organising things and getting together and so what I can see is I think yes the potential is being unlocked very much so in this area and uh, can't really see exactly what it's doing but I'm sure you know, God is really unlocking our potential and enabling us to explore new ways creative ways of working together. It began last December 
um, when I made an appeal to the congregation here at St Peter's Church Hollywell for items to take to Calais. And we extended that appeal then beyond St Peter's to the wider Diocese of St Asaph. That was the beginning. We uh, took three vans to uh, Calais in December. We went again in May of this year and exactly the same process except we took different items. We peeled for building materials uh, and we took uh, lots of timber and tarpaulin and uh, lots of food uh, and clothing as well. Mark Iaconelli came with us on the May trip to Calais and when he got back he wrote something about his experience and he began his piece by saying that as Christians we spend a lot of time in church sitting and listening listening to stories of Jesus uh, befriending the outcast and welcoming the stranger and uh, healing the sick. A lot of time sitting and listening, but not actually acting, uh, not actually doing anything. And uh, I think for me, um, Calais was an opportunity to act, to, to do something, and to address a situation that's right on our doorstep, right on our border. And indeed, I was very impressed when I was there in July, the number of young Christians that are volunteering from the UK to go and spend time uh, at the camp. And I was just mightily surprised and heartened by the fact that every time you stopped to speak to someone, you were greeted with a great smile and a handshake uh, and a real sort of interest in what, was, in what you were planning to do for the camp. And the same when you sort of knocked on someone's dwelling or you know, announced yourself at the door of a tent, come in, come in, come in, and, uh, come, and come and talk to us and come and sit and chat. And, that human response really, uh, which was very moving. And I would like to try and organize a further trip to Calais. It's an ongoing situation. There's no sign um, that it's going to end, but there are still 7,000 people there and at least 600 unaccompanied children there. I think we've only really begun to scratch the surface in terms of unlocking potential <laughs> um, in this diocese. I, I think there's no reason why Every congregation in the diocese couldn't be doing just a little bit. Each winter is coming again and, and there will be a need for blankets. You know, is there a small space in your church or in the church hall where you could begin to collect blankets? Focus on one thing. Uh, and if each congregation was to do a little bit, then we could arrange to collect all of that and, and transport it out to, to Calais. My experience of Calais over the last year has been that it is a graveyard for people's dreams and people's hopes uh, and as a Christian uh, I believe that graveyards are something else than places of hopelessness and places of despair and I wanted to try and just make a contribution uh, to bringing some hope um, and um, to keeping some dreams alive really.